Lower Manhattan did not always look like the way it does today. Since the 1600s, Lower Manhattan has physically grown by thousands of acres. In fact, up to 30% of the land south of Canal Street didn't exist when the Dutch first arrived. It was water. The city expanded by dumping garbage, ash, rubble, and excavated debris directly into the rivers, slowly building new ground on top of the shoreline. This wasn't a one-time project. It happened over centuries. As the population grew and space became scarce, New York pushed outward. In the 17th and 18th centuries, the shoreline on the east side stopped at Pearl Street. On the west side, it ended around Greenwich Street. Everything west of that, Tribeca, the World Trade Center, Battery Park City, was underwater. One of the earliest examples of this expansion is actually tied to Wall Street. In the 1600s, Dutch colonists built a tall wooden wall at the northern edge of their settlement to keep out invaders. That wall stood where Wall Street runs today. But over time, the wall also became a dumping point. Residents threw trash, food scraps, and rubble over it into the river below. It was an early example of out of sight, out of mind. And today, if you walk through the financial district, you can still see fragments of that original wall embedded into the sidewalk and marked by historical plaques. As the city grew, so did the shoreline. To make more land, New York used whatever it had, ship ballast, street refuse, construction debris, and even ashes from burned household trash. In the 19th century, landfill projects accelerated to make room for docks, warehouses, roads, and housing. Manhattan's edge slowly crept into the rivers. By the 1900s, the island had gained over 1,400 acres of new land. But this expansion didn't come without a cost. The constant dumping into the rivers disrupted natural tidal flows, destroyed wetlands, and buried oyster beds that once filtered the harbor water. By the early 20th century, the Hudson and East Rivers, once rich ecosystems, had become some of the most polluted waterways in the country. Raw sewage, industrial waste, and garbage-lined shorelines turned them toxic for both marine life and nearby communities. One of the most dramatic examples of land building is Battery Park City. It didn't exist until the 1970s. When New York excavated the foundation for the original World Trade Center, more than 3 million cubic yards of rock and soil were removed. That material was dumped along the Hudson to create 92 acres of brand new land. Battery Park City was literally built from the rubble of what would become the Twin Towers. Other parts of the city expanded the same way. Ellis Island grew from 3 acres to 27. Rikers Island more than doubled in size. Even parts of Brooklyn and Queens were pushed outward into the harbor using landfill. This strategy of building outward worked, but it came with consequences. Most of this new land is built on unstable fill, not bedrock. And during Hurricane Sandy in 2012, many of these reclaimed areas were the first to flood. Streets turned back into rivers. Nature doesn't forget where the coastline once was. Today, the city is investing billions into sea walls and flood protection to defend the very land it created. The irony is clear. The places we made to gain space are now the most vulnerable in the era of climate change. So yes, 30% of Lower Manhattan is quite literally built on trash. That's not a metaphor. It's a reminder that cities are shaped not just by design, but by accumulation. And when we bury the past, sometimes it rises back up with the tide. If you enjoyed this video, Give it a like and subscribe to Forevergreen. Thanks for watching.